Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome to a YouTube Live with Marley Bird. Hopefully this all works out. We are trying out some new equipment that we I purchased. Um, I got some Sling Studio equipment, which enables me to use my actual video camera and my computer and my other video camera. Like I've got all sorts of stuff happening here. And so please bear with me if there are any technical issues, I'm doing the best I can. I know that sound today when we have our guest on the show isn't gonna be absolutely ideal and I'm not trying to preface this with hey it's gonna be crappy I just want you to know that I will work on it and try and get it better but for today's purposes we're gonna see if uh, this will work out so hopefully it will and so let's go ahead and let's say hello Go ahead those are the guests today and now i'm back in the picture with you guys and uh hello hello so caitlin i'm gonna go ahead and i will start off with you and i will ask you um what are we going over today what's happening sure so tonight is not an unboxing we're going to do something a little different it's Ooh, not a guys, sound is off what Sorry. go on everyone's saying no sound hmm Shows that the sound's on. Still no sounds? Very weird. Oh, just saying sound is back. Oh, back. Yeah. how weird. <laughs> Sorry, All right. Guys. Well, Technical here we go. We're working we're just, through no, this. It goes on again and we'll fix it if we can. Anyway, okay, <laughs> so we're not doing an unboxing. We're not doing a regular Yarn Thing podcast. Tonight, what we thought we wanted to do or what we'd like to share with you guys is talking about crochet hooks. And we're gonna start from the very beginning and we're gonna talk about it from somebody who's never crocheted before or you know, maybe once or twice. And then we're gonna kind of go through the process of what your choices are with hooks, what you need to think about with hooks and show you some of the things that you can spend your money on when you're ready to buy hooks. Um, so, and just to kind of preface this, we have Brittany, who is a beginner who just started crocheting um, right around when you started working with Marley, right? Mm -hmm. Or somewhere yep. around there. Last and then fall. you have last fall, there you go. Um, and then you have Marley, who's like our super duper expert. And then I'm kind of in the middle, you know. I know what I'm doing, but I haven't been doing it that long. But anyway, so we kind of have all the different perspectives here. And we're going to talk about our journey with crochet hooks and kind of where we fall now and what we enjoy working with to kind of give you guys an idea of what you might like. Um, so we're not going to say, just so you know, we're not going to say, I hate this hook. This is a bad hook. We're not going to say this is the best hook ever made. We're kind of, we're going to give you the pros and cons in our opinions so that you can make an educated guess before spending your money. Okay. So to get us started, we have to talk about the big debate. And that would be, are you a Bates or are you a boy? And you could be saying, well, I don't know, they both look like crochet hooks. And that's true. But really, when it comes down to it, if I turn them to the side here, if you can see, there's a difference in the hook tips. This one here is a Susan Bates, and this is called an inline hook because it's all kind of right in line. It has a sharper indent into it where the boy is called a tapered hook. And you can see it's a softer curve at the top, a softer um, indentation. It's just two different hooks. I don't have a preference on either one, which kind of makes it a bad thing because I can pick up any hook and I like it. Um, but some people are very one or the other. And it's okay if you're one or the other because there's many options for you no matter which one you are. Uh, Brittany, which one are you? I'm a Bates. I like sharp things because I tend to crochet very tight and you can just stab right into your stitches with one of them. Right. And if you take a look too, I don't know how well you can see it. The boy hook is definitely more rounded and the Bates hook is definitely more pointed. It's not pointy like a knitting needle. You're not going to hurt yourself, um, but it does help you get through those tighter stitches just a little bit easier. Absolutely. 
So, Marley, we know, what do you want to share which one you are or what you started with? <laughs> All right. Well, let me um, switch it up a little bit so it's on me. So I have this theory that whether you're a boy fan or a Susan Bates fan, it all depends on what you started with. Um, and for me, I went to that world famous yarn store called Walmart when I first learned to crochet and I bought some Red Heart yarn. And if you know Walmart, they actually sell um, boy hooks. So my very first hook was a boy hook. And I have found that um, since then, I have switched to Susan Bates because as you know, I'm the national spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. And what you might not know is that Susan Bates is owned by Coates and Clark who owns Red Heart. So that's why I use Susan Bates now. And for the longest time, I really struggled whenever I had a Bates hook and I had to transition from a boy hook to a Bates hook. There's just something that slight um, incline different, inline difference makes it a little bit harder. And so that's why I think people are like, I hate boy or I hate Bates. What is interesting is I, I would assume that it's really rare that anybody purposely changes from a boy to a Bates or vice versa, like I had to. And so what I found is now I crochet with a Susan Bates just as easily as I used to crochet with a boy. And when and if and when I ever pick up a hook that has a boy type hook, I have to change the way I crochet ever so slightly. And it takes me about 30 minutes to an hour of working through the stitches without having them fall off my hook or what have you to kind of get back in a rhythm of using that different hook. So I think that for many people who say you're a Susan Bates fan or you're a boy fan, it really all depends on what you started with and can you transition to one or the other? Absolutely. But you'll find subconsciously that you, maybe subconsciously the right word, that you are, you will change the way you crochet ever so slightly just to make that hook work best for you. So um, originally I was a boy fan, now I'm a Susan Bates girl, but really I'm an equally hooker opportunity person. So um, I'm really good with whatever works for the situation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. And I think your point too is very valid. And as we go through, you're gonna see that. We're gonna give you a lot of options tonight as to what's out there. And really, every time you pick up a hook, it's gonna feel a little bit different. And it's going to be a little bit different because unless you have an entire set of one brand of hooks, every single size, and that's all you use, each hook is gonna be a little different. And that is a good thing. So don't fear that um, because, okay, I don't wanna jump ahead. We'll talk about it in a minute. Let's get back to the hooks. <laughs> I know, I'm so, sorry, I was kind of long-winded there, but... <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. So while we're talking about the hook tip, let's kind of just go over the anatomy a little bit. So as we talk I about like when you put now, your hand up, that shows it really well. When you... What was that? When you're holding up your hook and you have your hand up, yeah, that shows the hook really well. Okay, so you start up here at the hook tip and you come down the shaft. And the shaft is just like a knitting needle. That is what determines the size of your stitch. So when you work it, you have to make sure no matter which hook you're using, boy, boy, <laughs> or boy <laughs> you have to get the yarn, your loop down here on the shaft to be able to get the correct size on every stitch as you work it. Then you have your sum grip here and then you have the rest of your handle. And so those are important things to know because as you see, um, depending on what brand you're using, the thumb grip and the uh, handle down here are what's gonna be changing the most. So with that said, these are gonna be your two basic starter hooks, your baits and your boy. And like Marley said, it's because this is what you're gonna find at your biz big box stores, your Walmarts, your Joann's, your Michaels, your AC Moore, your Hobby Lobbies, whatever you have near you, these are gonna be things that you can find almost anywhere, okay? So these are metal or aluminum options, okay? There's also other options out there. There's plastic and there's wood. And those are the three big ones that you have. You'll see the aluminum, you'll see the plastic, and you'll see the wooden hooks. And you may be asking yourself, well, what is the difference? And really, the difference is how the yarn is going to work and slide over your hook. Now, this one here you can see is um, a wooden needle. This is by Brittany Needles, which 
hint, hint, they're going to be on the podcast in a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> they do a lot of knitting needles, but they also do crochet hooks. And I mean, they're just beautiful here with the detailing on the end of their hook. Um, but what you'll notice is there's no thumb grip here. And so you may prefer a thumb grip or you may not. And so there's options for you there. Can I but, just take a minute and just tell you that the Brittany hooks, I love them because they don't have a thumb grip. Like I, I find them, uh, I, I hold my, I hold my hook like a pencil. And so, um, I don't know something about not having the thumb grip. I really enjoy that, that rhythm of it. I don't know. I like it. Before we move on, thank you for bringing that up because I forgot about that. There's two types of ways to hold a crochet hook. And so there's the pencil grip. Marley, you might have to show that again. Cause I don't, I do the knife grip. So the knife grip is like this so you hold it like you'd be cutting with your knife and marley does a pencil grip so mine is the elegant way yours is like the savage way no <laughs> that's right just get down to business caitlin what do you do or, i mean not caitlin Brittany, what do you do i do the stabby way really you, did you have to ask that the stabby way <laughs> that's hilarious okay so but yeah so that, that does make a difference in if you want a thumb grip or not because for me I find it very comfortable to have a thumb grip there when I'm holding things it gives me a place to put it but I will say there is something to not having one because it allows me to move my hand on the hook where it needs to be because if you're doing like um, a double crochet five together for a cluster you need a little bit more room and it's nice not to be choking the top of your hook and being able to bring your fingers back a little bit more while you're working, yep. especially that last yarn over. Exactly. So again, all different things. And like we said, we're not saying what's good or bad because there is no one right answer. That's right. And as you'll see, we've got a lot of hooks in our toolbox and that's because depending on what you're working on is going to change the need for what hook to pick up. For that's exactly example, right depending on if you're working with wool, acrylic, or whatever you may be working with, is also going to depend on what kind of hook you use. Um, an aluminum hook, when you're working, so this is chic sheep, and when you work with chic sheep like this, like the wool, it's gonna glide across your aluminum needles. It's, it's gonna, gonna be glide. very slick, because this doesn't have a lot to grip with. Plastic also is relatively slick, but I find this to be a little bit um, more draggy, depending yes. on what I'm doing. Okay, I know we said we weren't going to say what we don't like, but I'm not a big plastic hook person. Oh, no, no. If they're pretty, they're so pretty. But no, I am not a plastic hook person. I've already broken a couple plastic yes. hooks. Yes, yes. While I was in the car ride on vacation, and I'll be really honest, I tried putting it back together with a Band-Aid. <laughs> that does not work. <laughs> <laughs> well, trying to use only half a hook was really hard. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, totally the Band-Aid thing, or not the Band-Aid, the plastic thing. Like, I, when, as a new crocheter, I was like, oh, these are so pretty. I want to buy all the pretty plastic ones. And right. they just, they grip your yarn. And like you said, the smaller sizes, they break, like, right. nonstop. Right. So, so here I have an Addy um, plastic hook. Mm-hmm. But as you can see, this is a much thicker hook. I think this is an, uh, it's a nine millimeter. And so for this, this I can see myself using a lot more than something in the smaller sizes, which let's be honest, this is gonna break really easily. Yeah. Now, if you're just starting out and that's what you wanna get, then so be it, yeah. try it out. See if you like it, everybody's different. Um, but the wood hooks are going to drag the most um, with most yarns. Um, just because it's still smooth, don't think like there's rough pieces or anything no. like that. It's just the nature of the wood um, grips the yarn a little bit more. Also, this is going to be a little bit warmer feeling in your hand um, just because it is a wood. And you will notice if you use your wood hooks a lot, you're probably going to start to get hand marks mm -hmm. on them. Because, um, you know, you have oils on your hands and they'll get stuck on your uh, needles. Also, side note, while we're talking about your dirty hands on your needles, um, wood hooks do take a little bit more maintenance. You are supposed to put wax on them every so often, polish them out to make sure that they last longer. Um, 
So it's a little bit more maintenance depending on what you want to do. Well, now here's a question for you. If you are a primarily wool user, I was told that the natural lanolin on the wool coats the wood hooks really nicely. And so you don't have to use as much of the wax. I mean, I don't know if that's true. I was, yeah. I was told it that. It logically makes sense. I don't know. Um, I just know that with getting hooks, they've always told me you're supposed to put some wax on it, you know, at least once a year to keep it maintained. So cool. Awesome. Well, the more you know. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a deeper dive into what material. Brittany, you pick. Uh, aluminum. Aluminum. Metal. Okay. So your metal hooks. So you've got your plain hooks, right? And then, sorry guys, I gotta dig through my little stash here. I've got all mine here too. I keep all mine. Hooks, hooks, and hooks. Yeah, I've got all my Addies here too. Oh yeah. Except one of them, I'm using one of them right now. Right, so. Ha ha ha, show that again, Brittany. Wait, what did she hold up? I have my whole Nip Pack Ultimate. Ah, there you go. Isn't that cool? That's from Erin Lane Bad Guys. In case you need one, head over to her site. Yes. Pick one of those out because you're going to need it to hold all your hooks down. Um, so, okay, so Brittany was showing you her set of hooks, and she was putting, what was that called again? I forget. My Knit Pack Ultimate. The Knit Pack Ultimate. So, basically, she's creating her own kit of different needle si or hook sizes. Marley held up her Addie's collection, and that was a set from small to large in one case. So that is an option out there um, to purchase everything, one brand, one style, and it's something to do once you know you like it, okay? Uh, the one she's holding up now is the Susan Bates um, plastic hooks, right? Or no, those are the... No, they're aluminum. aluminum. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and the, the cool thing about aluminum, um, the Susan Bates one, they're color-coded too. Right. For the different sizes. Yeah. So most of them tend to be color coded for sizes so that you know there's a few that aren't. Yeah. Um, but most of them are. And so when you get started, just pick a hook. You have to start somewhere mm -hmm. and see if you like it. Yeah. And see what your experience is like with it. And then the next time you need a size, pick something different so that you can compare it. And then once you've kind of tried out a few of them, then you know what you like and then you can buy a whole set of whatever it is. Um, just so you're not jumping the gun into something that you're like, ooh, I don't like these. I never want to use them again. So talking about the Susan Bates, <clears throat> recently Susan Bates brought these two out with different handles to them. This one is the Super Light, I think it's called. Yeah. Anybody confirm that? And I forget what this one is called with the rubber handle. Um, but these help you just have a different grip inside the palm of your hand. So you just hold it just like you would. Now, Marley, have you used these yet and tried it with your pencil grip? I have. Does it make a difference? <laughs> so for me here, let me switch the camera angle real quick. And then I'll have to fiddle with this all again. So for me, um, like earlier you were showing your Addy hooks with the ergonomic handle. Um, yes. Like um, they can't see you yet, so don't show them yet. Um, but like I can't use those and I don't like the way all of the other ergonomic handle hooks feel in my hand as a pencil grip. I feel like there's too much weight on the back and I feel like it strains my hand a lot more. Even, um, you know, and I, and I like the frills hooks. I think they're nice and they are comfortable, but there's just something about them. I don't find them as comfortable as a regular old Bates or boy hook. Um, and these aren't even like super weighted at the back. There is some weight to them though. Um, and it's just enough that I don't know. I, I don't find them like as comfortable as just my regular ones. Now, I don't have arthritis or anything either. So it could be that, you know, as I get older, if I happen to have some sort of hand, I don't know, hand injury and ailment or anything, it might be that the thickness of the furls or the ergonomic ones might be m more comfortable for me. But as of right now, I don't, I don't find those as comfortable as I know that most of you who are, um, the uh the the stabby people <laughs> find those really comfortable you know what i mean so yeah <laughs> so let's so see here what has your experience been i know you've tried both of these hooks as well um i am not the biggest fan of the one with the actual grippy grip grip <laughs> but i do like the ultralights because it's the same weight as the regular hook but it has the bigger grip 
So, I mean, it doesn't put any extra weight on it and it feels a lot nicer. Right. And that is, again, why you try your hooks, because some hooks are going to feel heavy. Um, I'm just going to bring this up now. This is the Furls Odyssey. And I know a lot of people talk about this and say, oh, I love this. I think it's so beautiful. And I have to say that I've only used it once and it hurt my hand. I couldn't crochet for two days because it is just heavier than the other hooks. I mean, I, I will admit that when I have furls, I'm very used to just their regular wood hooks that are very light. And so for me, I don't know if it was just that difference straight up in weight that made the difference. I mean, the stitches worked really well on this. You have the nice aluminum on the top, or I think this might even be nickel. I think it's, I thought it was nickel plated. Nickel plated, that's, yeah. I think this one's nickel plated. I mean, it's a beautiful hook. It's beautiful. Overall, it works well for stitching but it slowed me down because of the weight and it just made me work my stitches that much different that it put a strain into my finger and it's going to be a while before I try this one again. Yeah. I mean, let's point out we're not, we're not absolutely not dissing any of the hooks. It's just, no. there's something different for everybody. I mean, I have friends who swear by, is it the Tulip Amour hooks? Like they yeah. swear by those things. I use them and I struggle with it. I mean, and I've tried it several times and I'm like, you know, it's just not the hook for me, but that doesn't mean it's not the greatest hook for somebody else. And I totally get that. Right. And, and yeah, I'm just saying for me, this was heavier and harder to use, but you will see many, many, many designers out there taking photographs of them using this hook and loving this hook and everything else. And please go try it out. But for yeah. me, like the hook Marley's holding, the candy shop hooks and the wood hooks from Furl are my preference. That wood um, hook you're holding, I've never seen that. That's beautiful. This is their new one. So side note, my husband thinks that, okay, my husband went and found these hooks by himself without me telling him. And so he has bought me some of the newer hooks um, as Christmas presents and birthday presents. And I must say, he's done a great job. This one is the new um, resin one that they just came out at, the, at Christmas time. That's beautiful. And, yeah, and this was one of their special collections that he got me for my birthday. I think this one's the Hollywood. Wow, look so at they you. Have all different types of wood and the weights change depending on what the wood is. And I mean, come on, who doesn't love a pretty hook? Hand made, hand carved, I mean, they're just, I mean, and let's give a shout players. out that Harrison owns this company and he's been on the podcast before. It's a wonderful yes. company. I completely support Furl's crochet hooks. They're amazing. And I do feel like they are a piece of art. Like they're just as beautiful as like shenanigans. Um, and right. they're, they're pieces of art that they do. And if you want to check out more about them, you can learn. Let's see. I think, I think Harrison was on just the audio podcast and then shenanigans is on the video podcast. So you can check both of those out. But maybe we can get Harrison back on the podcast to show more um, stuff now that we do the video side of it all. Yeah, that would be great because, again, they truly are art pieces. They really are. You'll find that with other hooks as well. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the draw for some of them. And that's why you have to figure it out. And I know, well, let's take a side note since we went down that rabbit hole. Why not? <laughs> so speaking about, like, art, these are the nitpicks hooks. These are the Oceana collection. And, I mean, these are just... To me amazing the coloring that they have in mm -hmm. here with the wood grain and look there's no well very minimal thumb grip in here it's really not even a thumb grip and it's just a straight hook mm -hmm. now this is an inline so you'd have to like an inline but isn't it interesting that it's not pointy at the tip like that right. the it's, it's a very very rounded tip yeah and i don't know maybe it's just because it's wood but like see Here's the Brittany hook. I mean, yep. This is more of an inline, but it's very pointy at yeah. the tip. Yeah. So it really just depends. And again, going back to what Brittany was saying, you know, if you're working on single crochet, you might want something like this that's pointy because that's a tighter stitch. If you're working on all double crochets, you might want something like this. Still wood, still both straight, no thumb grips, but one has a pointy, one is a round, both inline choices. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. choices. That's I know you're going to go about. about this. It's not just choices too, but gauge changes. And I know you'll talk about that later, but I just want to yeah. throw that out now that if you choose one hook for your project, don't change mid project because it could change your entire gauge. Just we'll talk about that later. Just kind of hold that in there as a nugget. 
Well, we could talk about that now. Oh, okay. We, we probably should have since we talked about the different materials. But so we talked about the drag on each of the different hooks. And that's what Marley's talking about. If you start out with something that's super slick and you're flying through, your gauge might be looser than when you switch to a wood hook and things catch a little more and things pull a little more and then it's tighter. So just something to think about. Don't be switching halfway through, just like you wouldn't switch knitting needles halfway through. Um, you want to stay with what you started with. Hold on, Brittany. So what did you start with? I, I'm sorry, if I missed that part, I'm sorry, but what did you start with? Susan Bates, because you're a Bates girl. Bates, All right. So you're a Bates girl. So have I you am. tried, I think that you do have the Brittany hooks and some of the other hooks. Have you tried some of them? And what was like, what was it like for you starting off with Bates and then switching and trying some of these other hooks? Like what were some of the experiences you had? And the reason I want to ask you specifically is because I know that you're a brand new crocheter. You just learned to crochet when you started working for me. And so I think that that's important to put out there for many newbies who might be watching. Well, I have a whole variety of like all sorts of different ones and I've tried most of them at some point or another. Um, but I really like the furls one for like chunkier yarn because I have one of the bigger ones mm -hmm. because it's just as pointy, but it has like the big handle for that. And I really love this one. And I do, I do like these, the aluminum one, the light yeah. extra handle ones. Um, but my favorites right now are my Denise set for Tunisian actually. Because they're plastic, but they're very, like, bendy. Uh -huh. So they have a lot of rebounds. So once you get into a rhythm, they're like Nike shocks for your crochet. And it just, like, keeps going. <laughs> that's cool. Now, Denise yeah. needles, I have never used those. So that's a completely different plastic needle than what I have used before. And I love that you're able to say that it is bendy and it has a rebound aspect to it. And it doesn't just break on you. No, not at all. That's they're awesome. super, super bendy. I had to get used to it because I was used to... Um, like the metal Tunisian hooks and uh -huh. it's very stiff and holds everything very straight. And I'm like, I don't know if I can get used to this, but once you get into the rhythm of it, it really actually speeds things up quite a bit. Very cool. Very cool. Love it. I love it. All right, Caitlin, back to you. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to get the hang of all of this. This is, this is a lot. I think I really need to pay my daughter to be the switcher of it all because it's, it's, difficult for me but I'm, I'm managing so far so good <laughs> as long okay. as the sound is coming through we're good so let me just pull out a couple hooks here and um one thing i want to point out before we move on so we've been talking about aluminum hooks and there's something to note that there's something called a steel hook and a steel hook i mean this has a grip on it so it's not a traditional steel hook that's as they get smaller and smaller and smaller they turn into a steel hook um, and this is what you would use to make doilies um, a lot of times people will use this for when they're beading um, in their crochet or their knitting they'll use this to string it on or even delicate lace projects so that's an option as well we're not going to really talk about that just because that's not what people mostly use. And it's really falling under the same principles as we're talking about now, just way smaller sizes. Yep. So, okay. So taking a look at the aluminum hooks, there's a couple different options. We showed you the two Susan Bates handles, and I just want to run through a couple other handles that they have. So we talked about the Furls Odyssey, um, which has the nickel plated on top. And then it's got this nice sleek handle here. Um, actually, I don't even know what this handle is. I don't know, but they sure are beautiful. Not gonna I lie. I mean, that, the sparkle in there. It's beautiful. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful hook. I know. It's so pretty. I just let it sit on my desk. I have a little um, container that I have all my like pretty hooks that I keep in there so I can look at them. <laughs> um, okay, so you have options of handles such as wooden hook, wooden handles. Um, this is a Susan Bates wooden bamboo handle. This is a collage square handle. Mm -hmm. These, oh, these are really neat. I didn't think I was going to like these because they're square. And I'm like, really, is it going to make that much of a difference? I love these. And the great thing about these, which I just want to take a moment and pause, is take a look at the tip. This is an inline hook with a super sharp point. I mean, Ask me who showed them that. This, <laughs> this is like the sharpest point I've seen, but, oh, I don't have it with me. They have another option that has a rounded tip to it. So 
depending on what you want, you can have your point or you can have your rounded all in the same style of hook once you determine this is yeah. what you like. I mean, these are just, I really like these hooks. I love collage yarns. And like, I was really sad when they went out of business and I was clappy when Louette Yarns actually purchased the needle and the hook side of the business. Because when, when, when they were going through designing their needles and their hooks and all that stuff, like, um, I, I was able to get some of the prototypes and give them feedback and such. So I just, just say it. I really love that point because it was one of the things that Mark was like, what do you think? I don't know. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. I loved it so much. I think it's fantastic. So um, I like the collage. Now, I am not a fan, again, and it's just because I'm a pencil holder. I don't, I don't like the, the grip part, but I love their square needles. Like I love their square needles. I especially love their square double pointed needles. So those of you out there who, um, did the sock knit along and you are still struggling a little bit with your, your double points. Like I love the square needles. So I felt like they grip just that little extra bit. And you know, I just, I don't know. I just love them. I found them really easy to stack on each other as I was knitting with them. And I, I digress. I'm sorry, squirrel. <laughs> this is <laughs> Caitlin and Brittany are like, oh no, here she goes. <laughs> so then another yeah. option with the wood handles. This is the Chai Gu. Is that how you say it right? Chai Gu. Uh huh. Uh, their needle, and here you can see their back part is actually the flatter of the parts, and this is a little bit thicker at your thumb grip. I'll turn it on the side so you can see. Interesting. I've never seen those. Now the only downfall for me of this hook is it's a little short uh, and it hits me right here in the palm of my hand and when i'm working on a long project there is friction in there and i start to notice that my hand hurts right there mm -hmm. so maybe it's just because of the way i hold it i don't even know if this would work as a pencil grip but maybe it's just where I like to hold it. Maybe I need to get a different position on it. I'm not sure, but for me, this one's just a little short. So that's another thing, why you try out one hook, because you've got to make sure it fits into your hand properly. Maybe you so just have big like hands. It. Maybe I have big hands, okay. <laughs> no, but honestly, I'm like you, I have really big hands. And look, so- Look at this, look at the difference. Yeah. Absolutely, that oh, that's a pretty hook too. This is an Addy hook. I've never seen that one. That's pretty. I am not sure what it's called. It's on their website though, but this is a wooden handle as well. And it's got their, I don't want to say signature, but. Yeah, no, you're right. They have like they that have kind of grippiness. This different grip. It's not a, yeah, grip, grip. Yeah, I hear you. Now, and I so, love these. Like I, these were my go-to needles or hooks before I went to Susan Bates. And I mean, something about, I don't know what it is about these. Like they're just, I love these. I I own like three sets of these. I love them. <laughs> I know I do, and I just they're great. So also with the Addy, they have the Addy swing, which is like now this. I don't like this those. Is to be ergonomical. Again, though, this is a knife grip person. Uh -huh. This is somebody who's going to hold it this way, where your thumb fits in there. It fits into your hand and then you can work it. Yeah. The cool thing about these is you can see the tip here. They have, this is the longer shaft of the needle. They also make a shorter one mm -hmm. depending on what you like as well. Yeah. So you can really get some um, customization here yeah. depending on what you're doing. And this comes in a full, you can get every size as well. And that Pretty one fits your hand too. Like that one fits your hands really well. Right, yeah, this is perfect. This is like, yeah, just, goes right in there this is going to be a total kind of squirrel thing but you because you just mentioned sizes so as an addy fan um and then i i really like i really like using like dk and sport weight yarn and i think a size f hook is really nice for that now i want to tell you an f hook is not always the same millimeter size across all the brands so like an addy f hook is a i think a four millimeter but um there's also a 3.75 which they don't put an f on it it's just it's a 3.75 millimeter yeah. and so um along the size thing a size range make sure as you're looking at your hooks don't solely go by, oh, this is an F hook, this is a G hook, this is an H hook. Make sure you look at the millimeters because that's really gonna be your more consistent um, uh, description for each hook. And I'm just, I just happen to think about that. So just throwing that and out that's there. that's also why you need to check gauge. Because yes. again, changing the material, changing the brand, 
it is going to change things slightly. And, and you, gonna... you're different than the designer. You right. might crochet completely different. Right. And it's not always because you're using a different hook than them. Um, you could hold your hook differently. You know, you have different tension. Um, because you're using a different brand, it makes you hold the hook slightly different. Yep. You know, all these factors. So you just, you really have to do swatching. You have watch to. watch the podcast with Wendy Bernard that we just did and see the millions of swatches she's done in her lifetime. Did you, um, did you read one of the commenters on that video? I'm sorry. She wrote, she wrote swatches are from hell. And I wanted to be like, no, no, not really, but okay. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> like people have strong, yeah, people have strong opinions about gauge swatches. Just I, they're, they're necessary. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay. So the last aluminum handle that I have here, this is a polymer clay handle. Now this is That's from beautiful. Happ Happily Crocheted Hooks, which unfortunately they are now out of business. Um, but you can find these on Etsy and a lot of other places. And the cool thing about these is 95% um, of the time they will allow you to pick between a Bates or a boy. Mm -hmm. So you get to pick which one you want. Um, a lot of times they let you pick, do you want a thumb grip? Do you not want a thumb grip? Um, do you want the clay to only come up to the thumb grip or do you want it to cover the thumb grip? I mean, there's really a lot of ways to customize this. And yes, you could do this on your own at home, but I mean, come on, look at that. You can't do that. Okay, well maybe some of you can, but I can't do this. No, that's beautiful. You know, that's just, I mean, a work of art that you're pulling out of your bag every time. And so again though, this is gonna change the way I hold my hook because there's no thumb grip here which is fine, it's still comfortable to me, but it is gonna change the way I'm working. I guess I don't hold it this way, I hold it like this, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you, tried, have you tried any of those, Brittany? Any of the ones with like the polymer or the wood or anything like that? No, I think that would bother me because I'm used to just like super, super skinny. Like this is the one I'm doing right now. Wow. Like a 3.75, so oh, I, see? Think, I think it would super bother me to have anything chunkier than that. That's like my favorite size hook, just so everybody, just so now you know. But I end up, but now, now I don't use it very often because I use thicker yarns now, but a 3.75 is my favorite size hook, like bar none, that's my favorite. I love it, just saying. <laughs> I do, I love it. Okay, so also with the handles, I thought I had it here. You would think I would have it with all these hooks, but I don't. Um, Clover makes oh. an awesome line of these rubbery type handles. Now these are two plastic hooks. So what happens with these is the smaller sizes, so we're not talking about steel hooks, we're just talking about the regular size hooks, come with an aluminum tip and then the same handle here. As the sizes get larger, they switch to a plastic tip and the same handle. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say, I really love these. These are yeah. really lightweight for carrying around and transporting Although it makes it harder, like you shake your project and you're like, oh, where's my hook? It doesn't fall out as easy because it's not as heavy. Um, then you got to go dig yeah. it. But that's another story. <laughs> these are a great option as well. They're nice and smooth. Um, they're not going to break on you with the plastic and neither will the aluminum ones. So they're a great option as well. That's one thing about the plastic hooks. I think the bigger in size they get, the more I like them. Because I know like the mm -hmm. crystal lights that Susan Bates has, I like their larger sizes. I like them a lot. Like I like the... Um, the Susan Bates N hook and P hook and Q hook. Like I like those. Um, I do like those Clover ones. I've used those before and I think those are really nice. Um, I've also used this, the Addy larger hooks and they were actually Laura was just using some one today. Um, and they're nice. I think it's just the smaller sizes of the plastic ones. I don't really like that much. Um, oh. Just, just on that subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, also a difference, just pulling this out. This is another chai gu. This is bamboo. So this is going to make a difference then from your Brittany hook, which off the top of my head, I can't remember, but they make different ones versus a furrows hook where every, you know, you can get so many different woods. I mean, this is a Hollywood, which is different than, I want to say this is a koa wood. I think it's koa because we went to Hawaii. And so he thought that was pretty cool that it was koa wood. Um, but so it's going to be different depending on what wood you're using as well. Now, this is a really cool one. This is from Haya Haya. This oh, is their pretty. ebony. Yes. I, I love, love that hook. hook. I, I love, love that hook. 
I so did with not you. I think I was going to like it, to be very honest. And I find myself pulling it out all the time and using it. To I me, love it. It's weighted perfectly to hold in my hands and work with. This is now one of my go tos. I don't know. You know what I other like brand? Now. You would like um, Lantern Moon. Lantern Moon makes some really beautiful, nice ebony hooks. I like ebony and rosewood. Um, yes, rosewood yeah. is nice. I have a. I have a rosewood pearls hook. Yeah. <laughs> You have a lot of, this is my only Furls hug. This is the only one I have. Yeah. Well, tell your husband um, where, where Furls is, and then he'll start getting emails like mine. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, and then the last one here, I just kind of want to show you that there's different materials. This is actually, this is also from Haya Haya. This is bone. Oh. And I mean, it's got this nice, this is the end of your hook, but it's got this nice little bone tip. Um, it's very smooth. Um, I find this to be more like, it's kind of in between an aluminum and a wood because it has the nice glide of an aluminum, but it feels warmer in my hand. Like I feel like it kind of melts into my hand a lot faster than the aluminum woods till they earth. Yeah. The aluminum woods, the aluminum hooks till they get warmed up. So this is a very nice option too. Now, again, this starts to go into a little bit more expensive. Your furls hooks are going to be more expensive. This is going to be an investment for you. Mm -hmm. But if you know you like this style and you want to look at something pretty, this you it's okay. Yeah. Like buy it because you're not going to get rid of this. You're not going to be breaking this and having to get a new one. You're not this is something that I'm going to pass on to maybe my boys but hopefully they'll have a daughter that I can pass this on to them. And it becomes that, you know, heirloom piece that people can remember, you know, and you can teach them with, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I love that. And so I have to bring this one up. Brittany, I know this is, you've seen these and you <laughs> you wanted to try one, but these are the lighted hooks, which I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see, but the tip lights up. And I did purchase one of these a long time ago. Um, this is a personal preference. Um, people say that it works really well with dark yarns. Um, for me, I thought it was going to be great for working at night. Like when I travel, not that I travel often, but like when we go to the shore, we travel at night because of our kids so we, they can sleep. And I thought, oh, this will be great. And it's actually almost too bright until the light starts like your batteries start dying and then it becomes more usable in my opinion. It's just so bright. It makes it hard to see. So again, personal preference, trying it out. That's the only way you're going to know if you want to buy every size, um, for what you want to do. So Brittany, did you ever get one of those? No, no. I, um, I think it's funny cause when I first started crocheting, that's when those came out. And I was very much like, Oh, I got to have those. I got to have those. And then one of my friends let me use them. And I was like, I don't like it so much. And I was just like you, Caitlin, I thought it was too bright. Like I, I had a hard time actually seeing where my stitches were. I love the concept of it, but I couldn't, I couldn't see things very well. I don't know. I, don't know. I think it just depends on where you're going to use it. Um, because I did notice too, that if it's not like pitch black type of dark, then that's a nice balance when, you know, it's just starting to get dark and then the light doesn't seem so bright. So it makes it that nice balance. So very cool. Wow, okay. that's a lot of hooks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Except they're all like the same size, though. <laughs> they make lots of decisions. Um, but we did talk about sets, and I just wanted to show this one. This is the Knit Picks, the Oceana set. They have a couple different colors, or maybe just two colors of the wood, but that's an example of buying a full kit together. Um, Marley was showing the Susan Bates kits, which you can buy in your big box stores. Um, and the Addy, I know there's a couple other kits that you can get out there. Uh, Addy colors are usually brand. Addy colors are usually available at your local yarn store, um, and then I think you can get a Haya Haya kit. And I've seen Bates kits. I've seen all of or not Bates boy kits and all that stuff. So I have a question about the the Knit Picks one. Um, yeah. So not just because I am a knitter and a crocheter both whenever I use my knit picks wooden needles when I when I had them I don't even have them anymore they would break on me constantly like 
constantly. And so that's why I actually got rid of them. And this isn't like, a, I'm not trying to down nitpicks. It just, again, I feel like just like you have to find the crochet hooks that work for you. You have to find knitting needles that work best for you. And it could be that maybe I knit too tight and I was breaking them all the time. I don't know. But have you had any of the crochet hooks break on you? I have not yet, but the only ones that I've tried has been towards the thicker end of it. I mean, the smallest size that comes in here is an E, and you can see, I mean, it's a small hook. It's very thin. I could see this break. I mean, you can see it yeah. bending a little bit. And the thing, too, I worry about is, oh, that's really hard to see, but look at how thin yeah. their tip is. So I don't know. Okay. I haven't used the smaller sizes. I've only used the larger ones. So no, I haven't had any problems with them yet. yet. Okay. But again, for me, when I work with smaller sized hooks, I want something that has some sort of handle yeah. on it. Because for me to work a long amount of time, that's more comfortable. And maybe it is because maybe I do have bigger hands. I don't know. Yeah. But I just like a little extra something in my hand when working with the small size of hook. Cool. So I'm going to go to Brittany real quick because I'm interested in your opinion on Tunisian hooks because, um, I mean, it's it's no One secret. One thing, though, before oh. we go to Tunisian. Never mind. On the list. Sorry, <laughs> Brittany. I just want to share this other kit from Knit Picks. This oh. is a box set. And these are pretty cool. I never saw these when I first started. So I want to make sure we share them. These are a double pointed hook. Mm -hmm. So you have two sizes in one hook. So this one is a 3.5 millimeter on this end and a four millimeter on this end. So now you have one, two, three, eight hooks in this little box out of just four. So something else to consider is getting these double pointed nice. hooks. So. Cool. Okay, now on to Tunisian. All right. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> I lost you. Hold on. I got to find you. I don't know how to find you. Isn't this hilarious? <laughs> I know. And I, and people are watching me do this. All right, hold on. So I got to find them, you guys. I don't know what I did. Um, let me see if I can find all of my available there you are. Okay, I found him again. <laughs> let me let me put you back over here. And maybe <laughs> come back down here. There you are. All right. So sorry. Okay. Um now I've totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh gosh, I love technology. Okay, so Tunisian. I have not made it any secret that I don't Tunisian crochet. I know how. Um, but I I just don't, and I think part of that is because I know how to knit, and I feel like Tunisian, to me, and I could be completely wrong, I mean, I've had big discussions with this with like with Kim Guzman and stuff, um, but to me, Tunisian is a way for crocheters to get a knit-like fabric, but not knit, and I know that it's a lot thicker, it's a lot more dense, it's this, that, and the other. So I actually own Tunisian hooks. Um, I actually own an Addy set, but I have, in all honesty, never even used them. So knowing that you, as a beginner crocheter, who is also a beginner knitter, has uh, really glommed on to Tunisian crochet, uh, like, tell me a little bit about it. Like, what's been your experience, and what is it about it that you really enjoy? So I really liked the look of it when I first started doing all of my research for when I started working with Erin Lean Bags. Um, but I kind of did, held off on it, and then we went to go clean out my grandmother's sewing studio after she passed away, and I can't sew, but I can knit and crochet, and one of the things that she had a lot of were the afghan hooks, and that really got me to try it with worst weight, and I really love it. I did it with um, the Super Saver Fair Isle review that we did, and it looks really pretty like that, and I don't think it's really knit fabric for crocheters because... It depends on what side you use because one okay. side looks very much like knit fabric and then one has a very interesting texture if I can actually get it to focus. Okay. Probably not. Yeah. So I really like that texture. Um, this is something I'm working on with It's a Wrap and some Destination Yarn. And I find it a lot more just like meditative. Like with crochet, I kind of have to figure out what space I'm going into. And with Tunisian, it's just in a row and it's lined up and I find it a lot easier, but it's probably just how my brain works. So I just, it's one of those things I do when it's a mindless project. I don't do anything complicated with it. I don't do any lace. I just keep going. I have basic increases and decreases and that's it. Okay. So the straight aluminum hooks, I have those also. Um, 
did you find okay so let me let me back up the denise ones you have do they have a cord at the end so then so they, they, do. they have different okay. lengths and then you can connect them or they have the little stopper you can put on the end okay so very much just like knitting needles how you can either use straight knitting needles or circular knitting needles it's the same idea with the tunisian hooks yes yeah cool so i definitely needed the interchangeable set to go for longer projects because i mean this is about as long as the tunisian hooks get and this is a double-ended because i wanted to try some of kim's projects with the double-ended tunisian she's amazing the guts up to do it yet but i have the tools <laughs> but I really like the aluminum ones for the worsted weight because I feel like it just supports the yarn a lot better. And it, with the flexi ones, it kind of just slides off down to the end. Okay. So that's my preference. Like for the fingering weight yarn, the flexible ones are so much better to get into the tiny spaces and just keep going. But then when you're working with big yarns, you want something that's a little more sturdy. That's so cool. That's so cool. I love that. So Caitlin, do you do a lot of Tunisian at all? I've done a couple projects with it. Um, I love the, the look of it and I love the projects. I just, I don't know. I haven't done as many as I would like to. So hopefully I'll get to do more of them. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I don't know. This is so cool. So um, kind of jumping back to the whole idea of the gauge thing, um, just because people might not understand what gauge is, let me switch the camera view again. So when we're talking about gauge, and it won't switch for me. I don't know why. I, I don't understand this technology thing. So when we talk about gauge, that's actually what the designer gives you in the pattern. So that way you can get the exact number of stitches and the exact number of rows per inch as what they used for the overall pattern. So when you're making a sweater, in order for your sweater to fit, you need to make sure you get gauge. Now, when the designer gives you the hook size they use to get gauge, that does not mean that's the only hook size you can use to, to try out your, your whole pattern. You need to be able to change hooks to get the gauge. It doesn't matter if you are using a C hook and the gauge the designer used a G hook or an H hook, if you're getting engaged with a C hook, use a C hook. It doesn't matter because gauge is purely written as these are the mathematical measurements I use to get this pattern. Now, you use the hook size that you need to get that same measurement. I happen to use an H. So you're crocheting along, you're like, wow, this H is too big, and you keep going down in hook size because you need to try and get down to the right gauge. You end up with a C hook. That doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. You just crochet a little bit tighter than what the designer does. Does that make sense? So when you're using different hooks and the way you hold your hook and the way you might hold your yarn and the yarn you're using will change up maybe the way you crochet. So it's important to make sure that when you do your gauge swatch, you do your gauge swatch with the hook you're going to use for your project. This also goes back to the point of making sure that when you're working on your project, try and stay with the same hook as you have started with the project. Now, does that mean, oh, I've lost my Susan Bates H hook, I, I'm, I'm done, I can't work on this project anymore? Absolutely not, I mean, come on, let's be real. You can go get another Susan Bates H hook, or if you need to change to a boy hook, and it might be that you need to do, a, do another gauge swatch to make sure you get the, game, the same gauge. Um, it all, it's all a matter of what you want to do. Now. I know there's going to be some of you out there saying, I make blankets, I make scarves, I don't ever have to do a gauge swatch, I don't want to do a gauge swatch. Great, you don't have to. Those type of things, it really doesn't matter, you know, unless you're all of a sudden trying to make a baby blanket and it's a queen size blanket, you got some issues. But when you're starting to make things that need to fit, gauge is very important and these are important facts that you need to know. Um, if you are going to start making objects to sell, it's important that you make things that are consistent, that are nice and are right the right measurements. So gauge swatching is important, okay? So that's my big thing there let me bring you back in here and if I can figure out how and it's just so much work I'm telling you uh, so I you're here yay um so it, it did all of that gel well with you Caitlin I mean does all that make yeah. sense okay how about yeah. you Brittany I just it's I just want to pr say that this is one thing you don't want to be frugal about um, you can be frugal about your yarn choices if you want. You can be frugal about how much you spend on a pattern. But the hooks that you use should not be that place where you say, oh, I'm only going to buy the cheapest thing 
ever because you're going to run into problems, I think. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars to have a full set of anything. It just means try different things to find what you like, to find what puts you in your rhythm and makes you happy. And it's always good to have a couple options because if one's not working um, or, you know, something's giving you a problem with your hand or where it hits or something like that, that you have an option to try something else. That's all. That's the biggest thing we're trying to get across here is there's so many options. Don't yep. limit yourself. Absolutely. How about you, Brittany? What do you have to say? I would have to say that you're going to get a lot of recommendations that you have to start with a certain set of materials to crochet and you don't have to listen to them. So everything I read before I started crocheting was grab some super saver or super bulky yarn and like a standard hook. And you have to like do everything with just the basic cheap things to figure out if you like it. And I'm the kind of person that if I don't like what I'm looking at while I'm doing it, I'm not going to be interested. I'm not going to stick with it. So my like first ever project was, was with Unforgettable. And the girl at Joanne's thought I was absolutely insane. But because it was so pretty, I kept going and I kept going with it even when I had to rip it out. So work with what you really want to work with. If you see pretty yarn, grab it and get started. The whole point is just to get started and everything else will go from there. Yeah. Especially Chic Sheep yarn. You'll love it. Chic Sheep by Marley Bird is amazing. It's like butter. No matter what hook you're using, you're going to be happy. <laughs> Brittany, I love, I love that you started with Unforgettable. And I just think it just, it's totally your personality because you are, I love, I love that you're so much like me. You're balls to the wall. Nothing's holding you back. You know, I want to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to work for the national spokesperson for knitting and crochet here. Like, you know, I'm going to, all right, I got to learn to knit and crochet. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is just brilliant. So kudos to you. And you're like the, the perfect person to let people know you literally can do anything you want. Like just grab, grab some hook and yarn and, or needles and yarn and, just do it. Like, have no fear. Just do what you need to do to get where you want to go. Yay. <laughs> this has been so much fun. Um, so because Brittany has been looking at the YouTube questions the most, I think we should ask her, are there any questions that people have had out there? Um, any comments? I mean, I'm not real sure. Um, a lot of comments about big box stores not having a lot of options in store. So yeah. do you guys have any recommendations on places where you can get like one of each kind of brand or get mm. more of a variety online? Yeah, I think you're really going to have to go searching online or you're going to have to try to find a local yarn store um, because you're not going to find those quote unquote specialty hooks in your big box store. They're going to have your plastic, they're going to have your aluminum and they're going to have some wood like I know the Chai Gu, they sell some of those. Um, they come, no, is it Chai Gu? Yes, it's a different package though. Uh, they sell a couple bamboos in Joann's that you'll be able to find. But if you really want to try some of the more specialty, like the ebony or the bone or things like that, you're going to have to go online or find a local yarn store to be yeah. able to get them. Yeah, and you know what? And not all yarn stores are created equal when it comes to crochet. I mean, it's sad but true. So um, I really like going to webs, and their their website is really simple. It's yarn.com. So if you check out webs, you check out knit picks. Um, I think Jimmy Bean's wool is very crochet friendly. Um, if you have any sort of a wool festival, Festival or a stitches or anything like that close to you, that's always a great place to go and check out what the different vendors have there because some of them might have things that we don't even have here to show you and it's great to go and check those out. So those are those are always really wonderful things to go to. And just as a side note, I will be at Stitches United in uh, Schaumburg, Illinois. It's a suburb of Chicago in August. I would love it if you come join me there. And I know that they are very crochet friendly there and there's a lot of crochet stuff that's going to be there so if you want to check out more about that um, we will make sure to put a link up in the video description box of this video and it's always linked over on marleybird.com as well um, so there's that Brittany are there more any more questions stitches Midwest just in case people are looking what did I United. say I um, said United yeah of course so stitches someone... Midwest where did it just go? Posted a really great tip from, where are you? Where'd you go? 
about using hand lotion instead of wood wax on your hooks when you're on oh. the go because people are more likely to have that. So I really like that. I think it's from Jill Chin. Oh, I have used um, hand lotion before. I've put it on my hands and then used my aluminum hooks. Sometimes, like, if they get wet or something, they, like, get squeaky and stick or if it's, like, too moist in the air, um, like, with humidity or something. Um, so if you use a little hand lotion on your hands and just kind of rub your hands on the hook, that does work. Interesting. Uh, we did have a question about what kind of wax do you use for your wooden hooks? Oh, that's a good question. I know that Brittany hooks, which, again, they're going to be on the podcast in a couple weeks, so they can really go into detail. They have their own special wax that they sell on the website. And um, for furls, I can't remember what they said, but it's something simple like, I want to say like even like mineral oil, or, but don't quote me on that. It's on their website. It tells you how to take care of it and everything else. So whoever you would buy your wood hooks from, they should have somewhere on their website, either a product that you can purchase or exactly how to take care of their specific hook. There you go. I don't, I don't own a lot of wood hooks, so I honestly don't know. Um, so I would answer you, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's all the things. Everybody else was just giving opinions, which is amazing. So everyone can see what everyone who's been here has preferences for. That's cool. I know that Chris Lopez mentioned the other day that, um, so she does have, did she say she have arthritis? She has something going on with her hands. Uh -huh. And um, so she uses the Rainbow Loom um, rubber bands and makes a gripper for her crochet hooks. And I thought that was really unique. I had never seen that before. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know. Pretty cool. So after learning about all of this and reviewing all the different hooks, um, what like, like what's one that you hadn't tried before, Caitlin? I mean, I know you've said a little bit periodically throughout the whole show, but like what's right. one that you're just like, you know what? I didn't think I'd like this one. And out of all the ones that I just wasn't sure about, I really like this one. Um, well, I think I've learned. So when I started out, I don't remember if I started with a Bates or a boy. Um, it was something that they were passed down from my great grandmother. Nobody had done it. So I picked it up and used them. And like I said before, I go between both of them. I really don't have a preference. I know that sounds maybe odd to some people because they are very, I'm Bates, I'm boy. I don't really have a preference. It depends on what I'm doing. Um, but going through this process of trying all the different hooks, I have found that, I don't know if it's because I'm getting old. I mean, you know, come on. I'm, no, but I don't know if it's with age or what. But now my preference is just something with a handle to it, something with a grip on it that gives me a little bit extra. And I don't know if it's because now I do a lot more. Um, because when I started, it was very casual, very hobby. And now it really is my job. And for myself, for you, for, you know, other people's gifts, for all these types of things, I always have something in my hand. And so I think just for me, I've learned that I definitely prefer something with more of a handle to it. Okay, cool. And I still find myself going to the, the aluminum. Yeah. 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 I hear you. How about you, Brittany? I have tried a whole bunch since we've all had the opportunity to try so many. And I still go back to the plain metal baits ones. Unless I'm doing the Tunisian where I want that bounce with the plastic. It's, and I definitely don't like wood because it drags too much and I'm way too tight a crocheter to do that. Yeah. But metal if it's regular crochet, plastic, the Denise plastic specifically, if it is a Tunisian. I love it. I love this. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today and going over all of these hooks. I think that um, having an option to show all the different hooks and kind of give our own um, like input and preferences and experiences with them is going to be helpful for not only experienced crocheters, but beginner crocheters. And I appreciate the time you've put into all of this, Caitlin and Brittany. Thanks for having us. Hopefully everybody learned a little something, saw some new options, and they'll be going out this weekend and picking out something new. And if you do, please let us know in the comments, what did you see tonight that you're now going to go and try or 
you know, something like that. Tell us what, what you pick up just yeah. to kind of know what's going on, what you like. I love that. And I know that if you want to join us over on the Marley's Minion group, um, Brittany is the head person, the head honcho of that group. And um, she would love to hear what you have to say over there and just get some discussion going. Let's let's share some love and have some good times um, doing all that stuff. All right. So I'm going to switch to my view, see if this works here. Um, I really enjoyed talking to all of you guys today and learning more about the hooks with Caitlin and Brittany. I hope you did too. Um, again, my go-to, you saw me pull these up earlier. My Susan Bates are my go-to, especially when I'm teaching um, here on YouTube. I also have these, I don't know if they make these anymore, but they're just like the Susan Bates but they have the Red Heart logo and they're just, they're not color coded, they're just gray. So sometimes you'll see me use these hooks on air, um, but it's still the Susan Bates inline um, point. And then I still use these a lot when I travel. These are the Addy ones. But um, again, just go check some of the different hooks out and try them out for yourself. So let's see if we can get this last thing going on. I had a video made uh, for an intro and outro of these, these little YouTube and Facebook lives that I do. So I'm going to see if I can get this to play. So bear with me. And before I get this to play, I'm going to say thanks so much for joining me today. Bye guys.